Matthew 13, 24 through 30, Jesus presented the riddle of the wheat and tares. There are four main points to this. First, he says the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. Second, the enemy of that man came and sowed tares among the wheat. This tells us that the good seed was wheat, and the word translated as tares, number 2215, refers specifically to darnel. Also known as poison darnel, this plant looks almost identical to wheat until the ear appears. This leads into the third point, the wheat and tares will grow together until the harvest, and at the harvest, the tares will be bound together into bundles, and the wheat will be gathered together into the barn. So who are the wheat, and who are the tares who look like them, but are not? Verse 38 tells us the good seed, or wheat, represent the children of the kingdom, the enemy is the devil, and the tares represent the children of the wicked one. Matthew chapters 7 and 10 explain this in a different way. Chapter 10 verse 16 says, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. And chapter 7 verse 15 says, There are those who wear the clothing of the sheep, but inside are wolves. There are two major points to this. First, there are more wolves than sheep, because he does not say the wolves are among the sheep, but rather the sheep are among the wolves. And second, the wolves don't just pretend to be sheep, they're wearing the clothing of the sheep. This is a reference to the defiled garment spotted by scaly flesh. In Jude 1.4, we're told there are certain men who crept in unawares, and these men are the angels who did not keep their first estate in verse 6, and they are twice dead in verse 12. This is a reference to the angels of Sardis in Revelation 3.1, who have a name that they live, but they are dead. Verse 4 explains that most of the angels of Sardis wear defiled garments. The angels of Sardis are one of the seven angels in Revelation 1 through 3. The seven angels refer to the seven stars, Revelation 1.20, which are the Pleiades star system, as evident in Amos 5.8 and Job 9.9. Jude also clarifies the reference in saying that these certain men who crept in unawares are wandering stars, verse 13, and without fruit. Verse 12. The garment that they wear is the garment spotted by the flesh, Jude 1 23. The flesh is strange flesh, verse 7, and more specifically, it's the flesh of Leviathan in Job 41. Verse 13 asks, Who can discover the face of Leviathan's garment? And verse 15 explains that Leviathan's flesh is made of scales. So this is the reference to the serpent, and Revelation 12 9 tells us the serpent is the devil. So the serpent, or devil, sowed its children, the tares, that look like the wheat but are not. And how do these tares look like wheat? They wear a clothing or garment that they use as a disguise. The wolves wear a clothing that makes them look like sheep. The garment, though, is spotted. We go into this in much more detail in the videos on the image. The image is used by the enemy to impersonate humans and this is how they crept in unawares. They are the fallen angels who left their own home, and that home apparently was the Pleiades star system. These tares, or wolves, Jude also tells us do not have fruit in verse 12. In Matthew 7:16, Jesus says you will know them by their fruit, then asks, do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? In other words, the tares produce thorns and thistles, not fruit at all so you will know them by their lack of fruit. This is why Jude 1.12 says they do not have fruit. So these tares will grow among the wheat, and they look like wheat, and cannot be differentiated except by their fruit or lack thereof. And this fruit does not appear until near the harvest. So at the harvest, the tares will be bound together in bundles, and the wheat gathered into the barn. The barn represents God's house, and the binding is explained in code in Matthew 16, 18 through 23. In short, it says Peter will build the church, verse 18, be given the keys to heaven, and whatever is bound on earth will be bound in heaven. Then Jesus says Peter is Satan, verse 23. In other words, the church, built by Satan, will be one of the binding mechanisms by which the tares are bound together. But this does not mean everyone in the church is a tear. There's no question that the tares are not human. Haggai 2 also goes into this. In verse 19 it says, Is the seed yet in the barn? Then goes on to explain that the vine, fig tree, pomegranate, and olive tree have not brought forth. 
In other words, they have not brought forth fruit. Then it adds in verse 22 that God will overthrow the kingdom of the heathen. Psalm 59, 1-8 through 8 says the heathen make a noise like a dog, which may explain why they are also referred to as wolves. In Genesis 3, 7, we're told the hybrids sewed together the branch of the fig tree when they married humans. This is how they mingle with the seed of humans in Daniel 2, 43. They are the fallen angels mating with humans in Genesis 6, 2, and 4, and they're doing this by disguising themselves as human. This is a very deep study into the image of Revelation 13, the clothing of light, the attire of the breathing substance of human bodies, the changeable suits of apparel, etc. The tares are not native to this star system or this earth, and they disguise their appearance. The wheat are those who are not wearing a disguise. For more information, follow the cards in the upper right corner and or the links at the end of this video. Thank you to everyone who has made this work possible. If you like this video, please consider providing support. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you again soon.